Hello and welcome to Rogue Reviews number 8. Today we're looking at Viceroy. Now this game for us was one that we spotted following playing for some friends after its Kickstarter release. The idea is that this is for the first game of ours, one of the ones that are going to put together a lot of different elements of other games and seem to do so fairly successfully. For example, this, kind of, this game earned its nickname of our house of Seven Splendid Kingsburgs. Now, if you've watched our previous videos, you know a little bit about those games. It's got the certain amount of collecting things which let you get more things of Splendour. It's got the idea of consulting different people of Kingsburg. And in terms of the multiple victory conditions, well, that's pure Seven Wonders. So the question is, if you throw these all together, shake them in a bag and pull them out again, does it make a good game? Well, I would hesitate, but I think probably yes. We've only played this a few times so far. It's relatively new in our house. And yet it's a game that my wife and I love quite a lot. And we found this is less for the children, more for us, because there's a lot more strategy here than Seven Wonders. It's much of a deeper game. And the idea is, is that you've got to kind of think a lot behind a lot of bands and a lot of things in terms of your whole game at a time, in terms of when you play things, how what effects they'll have, how much it's worth risking. So it's much more of a strategizing game and therefore I would say much more suitable to grown-ups rather than children. Still, there's still a lot there. We've played it once with them already and they've had a go, but we think this is probably a game for us rather than for them. Now let's let, take a bit of a deeper look and see if this is a game that you might want to have at your table. So, Viceroy, how does it play? Well, you are the Viceroy. You are kind of a leader, temporary leader of the kingdom in terms of who you can try and trust, who you can put on your side, who you can basically add to your, as it says in the box, pyramid of power. To do this, you will be attracting the attention of certain characters throughout the realm who will join your cause and have their own unique talents and abilities. So how does this actually work? Well, each turn, four new characters are dealt out that you can bid on to add to your own pyramids. You use this using Bisky, the gemstones over here, which come in four varieties, and you get a certain slightly random start at the end of each turn, at the beginning of each game, sorry. Um, and then from there, you can basically choose to add more, collect more, spend them off, etc., etc., etc. So it's definitely a rationing of resources. Now, in terms of how these people are added to your um, collection, as you can see, there are certain different jewels here. So, for example, on a turn, if you would basically want to have this gentleman, the warlord, you would basically have to bid for him. So, at the beginning of each round, the players basically can put a jewel in their hand and say basically like that's what they want to. So on the count of three, one, two, three, reveal. Oh, look, you want to have the Warlord. Well, that's fine. Unless anybody else wants the Warlord as well, in which case you go into a secondary bidding round and things continue from there. Let's assume that nobody competed with you. So fantastic, you get the Warlord. Lovely, great. So you can basically add him to your pyramid of power and get the benefits that he offers. So how much will he cost you? Well, that depends where you put him. If you put him on the bottom row, he will obviously clearly cost you here a further one yellow gem on top of the gem that you already paid to get him. If you add him to the second row of your um, pyramid, then obviously he would cost you a yellow and a green. A third row, yellow, green and red and so on. So yes, the higher they go up, the more expensive it goes. So let's just construct a sample pyramid that maybe you're a few turns in. Now, one thing that's quite important in terms of the game is trying to collect colours that match. Now this will help you later on in terms of scoring. So as you're collecting your characters, you may wish to try and get ones that match. It's not the most vitally important thing. However, it certainly, certainly does give you advantages later on. So this is a few turns in, for example. So what have we got here? Well, on the bottom row, we have the Helmsman, the Noble, the Poisoner, and the Strategist. Higher up, we have the Guard, the Fencer, and the Prince, and then we have the Enchantress, and you can keep going from there. Generally, you'll find that the base row goes up to five and then four, three, two, one. It's virtually impossible to collect more than that in the limits of the game because the game is about 12 turns long. So as you can see, for example, here, you get different wards. This person will let you basically choose three of any gems that you like from the store that's available. That can be very, very useful. This person will give you effectively an infinity gem, which, if you remember our Splendor video, counts as always having a blue available in terms of paying for any of these costs. That's hugely useful. This person will get us some gems. This person will basically mean that all of the scrolls that we might choose are worth plus two. Now, as you can see around the board, this features a huge amount of different components from just pure victory points 
through to bonuses to a certain effects, through to bonuses to certain completed color circles, through to certain extra strategy, for example, sword tokens, shield tokens, um, tech tokens, magic tokens, and all sorts more. You get the idea, there is lots going on in this game. Now, we go to our second row, for example, this is a straight victory point person. This can make our scrolls even more powerful. I guess we could start collecting some scrolls. And this person's got some more gems. Whereas higher up here, you can get extra cards. Now you start off the game with a couple of cards in your hand that can basically play one for free and one for a kind of reduced cost later on. And then you also may get some of these lore cards. Now these you can see add as you're building your pyramid instead of the character cards, and they'll give you certain advantages. Some will give you advantages straight away when you build them, and of course you can build them all for free, which means it's very, very useful to have. However, certain ones are best played later on, or they come into play at the end of the game. For example, at the end of the game, gain an extra three victory points for every completed set of these tokens you could get. So for example, if you get a shield and a magic and a um, scroll, this basically carries on. So shield, tech and scroll, you basically get extra points. And that's where points really come in, because this is a game, as before, with multiple victory conditions. So, do you remember how we said before about the colours were important? Well, at the end of the round, the end of the game, sorry, you counted the points. For example, here is a completed blue circle made from the base of this card and a coin to these two cards. Now, this circle is touching the second row, so it's worth two points. Well, that's great. However, if you had one of these, for example, at some point, then all of your completed blue tokens will be worth a bonus two points no matter what row they're on. The other good advantage is if you have any of these jewels left at the end of the game, you can basically paint missing colours. If we see the Enchantress here, she has basically part green, the fence is part green, unfortunately the guard is blue, so if you have a spare green, you can paint it there, and this counts as a completed green circle, touching the third row, so it's worth three points. There's more you can basically score. You can basically score infinity gems as before. You can basically score straight points. You can basically score scrolls, completed things. Swords and shields basically give a minus plus victory point token at the end of the game. There's lots going on. During the game, you're hiding things behind your little shield, which also gives you a reminder about what things do. So the other players don't know exactly what you have. This encourages a certain amount of, well, bluffing negotiation, because you can kind of go, well, I'm going to go for green. Well, I'm not going to go for green too. Well, I really want green. Well, okay, well, maybe what will you give me? Um, the other thing is, is if certain people aren't taken, the next turn they basically move underneath and you deal four more out on the top. So you have a second chance of getting some of your different characters. So if you're desperate to get it on one turn, you miss out. Or, for example, you can try and buy two people at once. It's not without hope that you can basically pick a people that you really wanted. Everybody, of course, will be building their own pyramid. So this is a certain extent a game that you play by yourself. There's less really player versus player mechanics in there. However, you can basically spend sword tokens to get whichever character you like instead of, of course, bidding. So that can certainly be able of get there first. And towards the end of the game, you can use sword tokens to remove points from other players, but there's very little player versus player. So if that is a limiting element to the games you enjoy, then you'll be pleased to hear that this has quite a, well, not very much of that at all. Um, so in terms of why you might like it, lots of deep strategy, familiarity with other games that you know. And of course, there's so many different characters. There's about 40 or 50 different characters here. And there's a whole huge amount more lore cards. So we feel that this is a game that there's basically probably about another 10 plays in it for us before we really feel we, we can actually call ourselves reasonably experienced players of it. Um, in terms of the different ways it's gone, some games have been quite close. Some games have been very, very far apart. Um, for example, like 70, 70, 60, 78, 71. Um, 80, 81, 86. So depending upon if you're getting multiple different elements in play, the game can be very close. I wouldn't say this is a game where you can collect just one thing and run away for the scores. It's probably not going to happen. So in that respect, you have to be keeping a lot of things going at the time, which is again why it might discourage younger players, unless they're very, very good strategists. Who knows? Um, so really, so far, this is a game that we're hoping to see what we can make of it. We're enjoying the, what we've played so far. And we're quite excited about what we can bring to it. In terms of the length, it's mid-length. We can't rattle off a game in about 20 minutes, but equally it won't take an hour and a half, really. So this is a good level of enjoyment of, do you want a game that's going to stretch you a little bit? Do you want a game that's going to test you and challenge you to think ahead? Then yes, Viceroy could be for you. So let's consider some final thoughts. So, Viceroy, what do we think? 
Well, as I said, for us, this is quite a new game in our house. We think it's got lots of potential because there's a lot of strategy there that we quite enjoy. We enjoy the bidding mechanic, we enjoy the multiple victory conditions, we enjoy the way that it reminds us of other games we enjoy. For example, Seven Wonders and Splendour and Kingsburg, all of which we love playing again and again. So in that regard, we think this game has definitely got legs. In terms of the wider family appeal, it's definitely more of a challenging game. So if you've got younger children you're trying to introduce to the hobby, maybe hold off on this one for the moment. At least that's been our experience. We hope, though, that the more strategy games that they play, they might come back to this game later on. We enjoy them. The artwork looks gorgeous. Um, it's certainly wrapped with decisions sometimes. You find that you um, sometimes you think that you're doing fantastically well and you're thinking like two or three moves ahead. Sometimes you're thinking like, oh, I'm running out of tokens, right? For this turn, I can't bid on new people. All I need to do for this turn is I've got to put out an empty hand. And then that means basically I can take some more tokens instead and basically pack up again and um, plan ahead for the next turn. So, so far, this is a game that we have found to be kind of ultimately quite an enjoyable game. Really exciting. Very, very good strategy wise. At times it can feel a little frustrating if things aren't going your way, but maybe that's just because we haven't played it enough. I think we're going to keep playing this in our house for quite a while, and I think it's going to be a game that my wife and I certainly, definitely, definitely will come back and back and back to. Um, if you can play this game with some friends first, I would say that's the, definitely the best choice. I wouldn't go straight out and buy this until I actually had played it a couple of times and made a decision, was it for me or not. Um, we are very, very happy with it. Um, and we can seem to see ourselves playing it for a good long while to come. Maybe you'll have the same experience, but again, try this one out before you buy. Thank you for ever joining us. If you want to connect with us, you can find us as always at rogueartistcreations.com. On Facebook, you can find us at Rogue Artist Creations. Our Twitter handle is at Rogue A Creations. If you want to reach me, I am GM First at rogueartistcreations.com. Thank you very much for joining us. Please keep giving us feedback. Please subscribe to the channel. Please follow us. Do anything you can to help us spread the word. We know we're very new at this game, but we'd love to be part of people's lives. We'd love to be part of people's um, gaming experiences. So please recommend us to others. Keep coming back to us and see what we're going to play next time. Thank you.